joining us from all around the world, but Wendy is overseeing here at the front, so uh, as part of the summit we're actually doing uh, a session every single slot today on air, so um, as part of what we do, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel, so if you look up the tech team on YouTube, you'll actually see a whole lot of our past sessions on air as well, and the idea is that uh, you know, not everybody, unfortunately, can be in Honolulu today. Um, as much as I'm pretty sure most people who are there um, watching would like to be here, uh, and so that they can feel like they're actually still getting the opportunity to learn alongside us as well. So we'll sort of, you know, you guys are going to feel you obviously get a lot more control than the people on air, but um, we will have some questions. There is a back channel as well. If any of you guys wanted to see what the discussion that's happening on air is. If you go to todaysmeet.com in a different tab, <coughs> forward slash edtech team, you'll be able to see contributions from people who are watching all around the world. You don't have to, it's obviously something <coughs> additional, but if you would like to see what people are asking and talking about, you can. And that, um, that Today's Meet's actually been open for quite a while, so you'll see, if you, if you scroll back through, you actually see quite an interesting history of uh, different sessions and people discussing things like that as well. So a good little network that you can potentially tap into there. So todaysmeet.com forward slash edtech team. And actually then if you aren't going to be attending in person any of the other sessions that are on air today, you can uh, sit in your other sessions in person and also connect via the back channel with another session that's happening at the same time. And people from Australia and New York and that's all over right. the world. So. And hopefully after the summit ends, you guys can go to another one when that's not Hawaii as well and keep learning with us. So thanks for having us. Cool. So we are going to talk about uh, Chrome today. So everybody in the room will have got the link probably because I had that up on the screen for a while. If you missed the link to the presentation, it's on the screen. So bit.ly forward slash hidden Chrome. And Look, we're not going to run through the presentation as a presentation as such, but everything I'm going to talk about is linked off here. Uh, so it's more of a resource for you to keep and take away as well. Um, my name is Kimberly. I haven't actually introduced myself. Um, I'm from Melbourne, Australia, uh, and uh, I'm very excited. This is my second time in Hawaii, and I have to say that um, I can understand why all of you live here, who live here. Uh, although the rain today has kind of thrown me a little bit. Like I thought it was, I was guaranteed perfect weather all the time. <laughs> and I think some, think someone lied to me about that. So, has anyone ever been to Melbourne, Australia? We have terrible weather pretty much all the time. So that's why I was like, perfect weather all the time I'm in. Um, but this rain thing, not too sure about it. Um, my background, I taught in a public school in, uh, in Melbourne, Australia for about 10 years, and I actually worked at the Catholic Education Office uh, in Melbourne. We have about 500 Catholic schools across Victoria, um, and they are still a couple of years down the track in the process of transitioning all their schools into Google Apps, which is a really exciting to be part of. But I now work full-time with EdTech Team, um, and I run, we have, a, we have an Australian version of EdTech Team, and I run that as well. So, Lots of cool things happening, and I am a hundred percent like there's no no point in trying to hide. I am a Chrome addict. Like I am obsessed with Google Chrome uh, because when I first was introduced to Google Chrome, I was there was one of those moments where I just went, "Why and how have I been using anything else to access the internet for my entire life?" Um, one thing I will say to you is, if anyone has Microsoft Internet Explorer on their device that they're currently using, <coughs> feel free to delete it now. Um, you know, Microsoft themselves have actually abandoned Internet Explorer, so they released a couple of months ago a thing saying that they are not even going to bother to update it anymore. So um, I think that's sort of telling. Um, so if you, you know, this is a safe space. If you want to admit that you're still using it, you can. We'll support you through it and help you to delete it during this session. <laughs> and that's basically what the aim of today is. All right, so I'm going to take you through um, all of my favourite things about Google Chrome. And the very first thing I'm actually going to do is look at one of my favourite extensions as a way of sharing stuff. So this is called Google Tone. Now, anytime there's an extension or an app linked in this presentation, what you can actually do is you can click on 
the image, which is the screenshot of it, and you'll see a website that will appear below it. And if you click on that, that will take you straight to the Chrome Web Store where you can install this extension or app. So I'm in my presentation on slide four. I'm clicking on the screenshot here, then the link that appears below. If you haven't installed uh, an app or an extension through Google Chrome before, basically the Chrome Web Store is just like what we used to with something like the iTunes Store. It's, a, it's an online repository of fantastic resources that we can attach to Google Chrome. They add to our Google uh, identity, so whatever Google account you are signed in as, and you can use them from that point forward. So if you haven't got Tone before, you'll see in the top right hand corner, yours will be blue and it'll say add to Chrome or free. You're going to click on that and it will add to your Tone. Now if you are considered a few people just simply using mobile devices, unfortunately this won't work for you on your mobile device, I'm sorry. Uh, so anyone who's on a laptop or um, an Android tablet might work, I don't actually know. Do they work on Android tablets? Some of you, like some people are nodding. Okay, so Google Tone, has anyone used it? Yeah? So it basically is a way, you know when you're in class or you're in a meeting or something like that and you come across a, a website or you've got a link that you say, hey, I want everyone to look at this right now. And sometimes we've managed to plan that in advance and we've actually put the link into something else and everyone can click on that, whether it's in a Google Doc or on a website or whatever it is. But sometimes we're just like, oh my gosh, this is perfect and I want all of you to look at it right now. Tone basically streamlines that process and it does that via sound. So once I've installed Tone on my computer, it actually will sit right up the top of my Chrome browser next to my Omnibox, which is where I do my searches up here, and we'll talk a little bit more about our Omnibox in a second. And it's this little icon here, it's a little, is that a megaphone? And it, uh, when I hover my mouse over it, it tells me what it is. So you can see it says broadcast this URL. And when I click on that, the sound's not coming out of over there. Someone else's is working, mine's, my sound is apparently, this HDMI cable is not allowing my sound to be pushed out. Somewhat problematic. Does anybody else, can everyone else try theirs? We should hear a whole lot of random little, sounds a little bit like we've got a whole lot of robots in the room. So what will happen is, once you click on this, it actually sends out a little uh, robotic sound, which is pushing out via the sound waves the link to whatever website you are on. Anybody else who has that extension installed will actually get a little pop up on their screen that will say, um, in this case, it would say Kimberly Hall has shared a URL with you, and you click on the link and it will open that URL for you immediately. So if uh, mine, for some reason, I think it's a setup with going through this HDMI cable and the Projector. Unfortunately, we're not getting my sound from this. Are anyone picking up other people in the room's tones? Yeah? So, it is the quickest, easiest way to broadcast stuff. Now, a couple of words of warning, and I will ask them to leave the corner if you've used this before uh, to share any insights you have. You cannot control who can broadcast stuff. So um, as you can imagine, imagine you are a room full of students. What happens the first time they download Google Tone? You lose 10 minutes with everyone broadcasting everything to everybody else in the room. Um, but the novelty tends to wear off reasonably quickly. The really good thing about it though is because we've installed it through the Chrome Web Store, oh, you can see, here we go, Richard shared one up here and I'm getting the link in the top of my screen. Because we installed this through the Chrome Web Store, you cannot broadcast anonymously. So no one can actually send out like, you know, not like our Google Docs where we have, you know, random animals are broadcasting uh, uh, links to things. It has to be, it'll come through and it's an account. So that helps with uh, making sure people aren't sharing things uh, inappropriate. So if I click on Richard's tone here that my computer has heard, and for some reason, come on. So, 
and we are completely, what we're doing right now is, is modelling failure, <laughs> the first thing that we're trying. Are other people having more success than me with the links that are coming up on your pages? Some people are. Um, gentleman in the corner who's used Tome, what, what have you been using it for? Yeah, it does. And generally speaking, in a room like this sort of size, so your average sort of classroom size, your um, speakers as a, that are inbuilt in your device tend to be strong enough for um, everybody in the room to hear it, I've found. So it will generally work a lot better than we just modelled it working. But um, you're just going to have to trust me that it's great. Uh, and I think it's a really, really efficient way of sharing and getting everybody on the one page. But feel free to continue to play with that and broadcast things to each other as we go through. All right, let's jump in and talk a little bit about, um, we're going to use some awesome things in Chrome and we're going to customise our Chrome experience this morning. So the first thing I just want to make sure that everybody's really aware of um, some of the features within Google Chrome. So first of all, I used the word before, and some of you may have thought you had no idea what I was talking about, I used the word Omnibox. So in Google Chrome, we refer to what we used to just sort of talk about as the place where we typed our web addresses as the Omnibox. Now the reason it's called the Omnibox is because it does so much more than just enabling us to simply type in a URL that we want to visit. Okay, it's Omnitastic because it does pretty much everything you'd ever want it to do. So if I open a new tab, for example, and I think, oh, gee, I really want to know how, what the word happy means, I can type in define and then any word in the world. And when I hit enter, I actually have a dictionary. Okay, so what Google Chrome is basically doing is, you'll see this session, is replacing a whole lot of additional things that we used to have to bring into our classroom and bringing them all into the browser experience for you. So I've got my dictionary definition of happy here. I wonder if my sound will play. No, we're not getting any sound, sorry guys. It does have the ability to listen to the word being said here. It gives me my nice, oh it is, you could hear that then, could you? Oh. That's good. So the, the three people sitting around the projector can hear it and everybody else just have to trust the three people around the projector. Uh, one of the really cool things that I like about this uh, dictionary that's built into Chrome though as well is you'll see down the bottom here we have this translations, word origins and more definitions. And when I click on that, it actually takes down things like the origin of the word which is really good. A lot of, I don't know uh, all of your curriculum inside out, but a lot of curriculums are now actually dictating that we talk to kids about, you know, the roots of words and things like that. Um, I can translate the word into other languages straight away. And I also get this really cool graph, um, which is coming from what's called the n-gram viewer. So n-gram viewer is basically um, something that a whole lot of nerdy people put together based on uh, Google Books. So Google has scanned all these books all around the world and they've actually put every single line in the book uh, in as code uh, and then now they can track the frequency of words occurring over time. So this is the frequency of the word happy. You can see that during the 60s, 70s, 80s we weren't very happy so we didn't use the word very much. Kind of nice to see that it's been on a slight incline um, but it's quite interesting to look at that and it's really interesting if you start looking at kids for words that potentially aren't as commonly used anymore and sort of seeing when they sort of went out of fashion and why. Uh, so it's a really great tool and that just comes in, you can see that by expanding your dictionary definition here. Now if I go back up to my Omnibox though, I can also do things like replace my calculator in my classroom. So if I wanted to know what 10 plus 4 times six is, I get a scientific calculator. Now I don't know what any of these things over here do, but apparently they're important <laughs> if you're teaching math, so that's good. Um, but it is quite a powerful calculator and it's just built into Chrome. If you do basic searches, you can actually, it'll actually start to, in your Omnibox, start to give you the answer without even hitting enter. Although once again, mine's not working like that today. 
Other things that you can do in here is that I know in my classroom I was constantly looking for a timer for things. If I just type in set timer for um, three minutes, I get a really cool timer that comes up. Uh, it also can do it as a stopwatch here. And if I need to be really dramatic and make sure the kids really realise that we only have a short amount of time, I can make it go full screen. And it plays an incredibly annoying beeping sound at the end of your timer, so it's very hard to miss it. But it means you don't have to go searching um, for any other tools in your classroom. It's all just built in. So set timer for whatever time you like, uh, and it'll just automatically start timing. And if you leave that open in another tab, uh, we'll get a whole chorus of different timers going off shortly. All right, something else that I really love about Chrome is that I'm someone who, if I can save like 10 seconds of my life every time I do something, I think it's worth learning about it. And for me, learning how to customise my Omnibox did that. So what I mean is if I open a new tab, and I'll zoom into my new tab so that you guys here can see, if I open a new tab here, so I'm going to use the shortcut for my new tab, which is either Command or Control and T. And I type in YT and then tab again. See in my Omnibox here, I'm actually now searching in YouTube. So if I search for happy again, that's a relatively safe search term when we're lots of people here. See how I've now instantly got my search results from YouTube rather than having to open a new tab, go to YouTube.com and wait for that to load, and then now type into the search in here, happy, hit enter. So there was like several steps that I've cut out by customising my Omnibox. Now, the way that we do this is that we actually need to go into our Chrome settings. So our Chrome menu is the three lines in our top right-hand corner of our browser. So it's a, uh, some people say that it's technically called the hamburger or the hot dog, I'm not 100% I'm not convinced still that that's its technical name, but it's definitely what it looks like. So these three lines in the top right-hand corner of your uh, browser is your Chrome settings. So when you click in here to Chrome menu, go down to settings. And we're going to come in and out of settings a few times throughout the session, so you'll get used to it. And you'll see your fourth option down is Google search here, search. So I went through my Chrome menu, so the three lines in my top right hand corner. I went down to settings and then I'm now going to concentrate on this section here that says search. So if you really wanted to, you can actually change your default search engine in Google Chrome from not being Google to being Yahoo 7, which I didn't even realise was a search engine still, and Bing. Oh, there you go. Is that my timer? <laughs> yeah. Now, do you know how I know that that's my timer? See, up in Chrome, one of the things you can see in your tabs is that if a tab is making sound, it has the little um, megaphone on that tab. Megaphone, you can actually right click on that tab too and mute it. So you can actually mute your tab there without having to close it. I probably will close it because otherwise we'll end up listening, having to listen to that awful sound again. All right.
right, sorry, we'll just raise screen share. Audio coming back. Thanks, at home. Okay, we're back on. Test your audio. Can you hear me again? Yep. Yep. Right, we're back in. Okay, cool. All right. So if you want to jump really quickly between your tabs, so you know that you have half a dozen tabs open, for example, and you think, okay, so I can see in my tabs up here, I have, first of all, pinned here, and we'll talk about that in a second, my drive, I have this presentation, I have the link to the Chrome Web Store with Google Tone here, then I have the Hangout there. I've actually, you can see on um, screen, slide seven, I've actually put in here this, the keyboard shortcuts to jump between your tabs. So if I press on my, I'm on a map, so if I press Command-3, it'll actually jump to my third tab that's open. Command-5 will jump to the fifth tab that's open. Now, it only goes up to 9, unfortunately. So for those of you who, like, who are like me and have real problems with tabs, um, you can't get all the way to like tab 27 with the keyboard shortcuts, but it can help you to jump between them uh, quickly. So if you're uh, on a Chromebook, it'll be Control and the number. Uh, and on a map, it's uh, command and the number. Now, the other thing that I have a bit of an issue with is that I used to be someone who had a whole lot of bookmarks saved in one of those like online bookmarking websites. Does everyone have that experience where you're like, great, I'm going to be super efficient, I'm going to save all these amazing resources in this bookmarking website, and then whenever you want that resource, all you do is you go to Google and you just search for it again. You, you forget that you've saved them all. So I basically gave up on that idea and I started bookmarking things that I used all the time and that's pretty much it. And there's a few different ways that you can do that in Google Chrome. Just the things that you're going to use frequently um, to streamline that process. So the first thing, and I mentioned this before, is that I have up in my top left hand corner this tiny little tab here. Okay, And this is my Google Drive and this is a pinned tab. So what that means is that every time I open Chrome, it'll be a cute little icon in the top left-hand corner, that tab ready to go. And I can pin any tab that I like. So my presentation that I have here, if I right-click on that, you'll see that I have the option to pin that tab. And then it condenses it to the small little tab. And you can see now I've got a couple of them, and so I can do that with as many as I like. Just a word of warning, when you start to pin too many tabs, they become a little bit ridiculous again. You don't even know what they are. So I'd only pin the ones. I usually have my Drive, my um, Gmail, and my Calendar pinned, um, and then a website that I use all the time for work I have pinned as well. Once you've pinned a tab, if you think, oh gosh, I didn't really want that there, you can right-click on that tab again and you can unpin the tab. So don't worry, nothing is set in concrete. You can always undo anything. But I find it's a really efficient way of me being able to access the things that I am wanting to access frequently. The other thing that I do is see down here in my bookmarks bar, do you guys have a bar below your Omnibox? If you don't see your bookmarks bar, you actually can turn it on, and I've shown you the two different ways in the screen here. If you press Shift, and then if you're on a Mac, it's Command-B. If you're on a uh, Chromebook or a PC, it's Shift-Control-B. It'll turn on your bookmarks bar. Or you can also access it via your settings. So we were in our settings before. So remember our hamburger or our hot dog. And our third setting down is our appearance. And you can see the option to always show the bookmarks <coughs> bar. Now, in my bookmarks bar, I have a whole lot of random bookmarks. Some of them I'll admit that I probably don't use that often. I probably need to clean up my bookmarks bar a little bit. But I have down here in the bot and the top, uh, sorry, the bottom left-hand corner of the bookmarks bar, all the little icons for the things that I am also frequently accessing. Now, if it's a website or a presentation or anything like that that you go to a lot and you'd like to have it permanently in your bookmarks bar, all you have to do is, and I'll do it with this presentation so you can see it. See up in my Omnibox next to the uh, URL for this particular presentation or website, there's a little lock that shows it's a secure site and you might see a little icon that has a picture depending on what page you're on. Click on the lock and drag it. See, as soon as I click and hold, so we're clicking and holding, as soon as I start to move it, you'll see that I have the option, I've got the little green plus there and I can drop it onto my bookmarks bar. 
So I just click down the lock, so click and hold the lock and drag it down onto my bookmarks bar. Now, some of them will have really long titles and they take up a lot of space on your bookmarks bar and you think it's kind of ugly, that's what I always worry about. So you can right click on it once it's been added to your bookmarks bar, select edit and you can change in here the name. So you can give it a shorter name or if you leave the name field blank, it will just leave the little icon for it. So I'll just do that one more time just in case anyone missed it. So we went to whatever website we're on, we clicked on the little padlock or the icon next to the URL, click hold, drag down onto our bookmarks bar. If we wanted to retitle it or get rid of the name, we right click on it and click on edit and then I can delete the name from here. If I save that, I now just have the little slides icon. Just like with our pinned tabs, if I decide I don't want that there, I can just right click on it again and I can delete it. And don't worry, you're not deleting the actual file or anything like that, you're just deleting it from your bookmarks bar. So I put all the things that I use frequently down there in my bookmarks bar. If I wanted to be more advanced, I could and I wanted to, have, I wanted to be actually spend some time using my bookmarks. There is, you can bookmark any website that you're on really quickly on Chrome by using uh, the little star that's in the Omnibox and then you click on that star, it'll give you the option to add it to um, anywhere you'd like. You can create your own followers within your bookmarks or you can add it to your bookmarks bar again. All right. Um, now, one thing that I do constantly, I don't know about you guys, is that I, because I end up with so many tabs open, and then I always think, oh, I need to, um, you know, cull some of my tabs because it's becoming unmanageable. I always close the tabs that I actually wanted open. Like, it doesn't matter what I'm doing, like, and how much effort I think I'm putting into thinking about which one I'm going to close, guaranteed I close the one I wanted open. So your best friend in terms of uh, keyboard shortcuts is learning either Command or Control, Shift and T. And what this will do is reopen the last tab you closed and you can keep hitting that and it'll keep reopening all of your tabs. It goes back all through your history. And so then whenever you accidentally close things that you didn't want to close, just hit your, shift, uh, your Command or Control, Shift and T and it will reopen that for you. You know also sometimes when we accidentally close the whole Chrome browser and we had like 25 tabs open, you can, uh, when, you, when you first open Chrome again, if you hit Command Shift T or Control Shift T, it will reopen all of the tabs that were open previously. You can also access the, all of those tabs if you accidentally do that under that Chrome, men, uh, Chrome menu again, so our three lines and your history. You'll see here I have 19 tabs open here. <coughs> So that was when I closed, closed Chrome at some point and I had 19 tabs and if I clicked on that it would open all of them again. I'm not going to do that right now because I'll spend the next five minutes with all my tabs trying to open. So Command or Control, Shift and T. Now, when we are getting into this habit of, of tab browsing and it is a really efficient way of searching for things online, there are some great Chrome extensions that can also help us to manage those tabs even uh, more effectively. So I've linked these all off the presentation, so exactly the same as the ones that we uh, were looking at before. You'll see when I clicked on these, they all have a website that appears below. And when you click on the web link, it'll take you straight to the web store where you can install these. So I'll just talk about these ones uh, and why I think they're great. So the first one is OneTab. Does anyone use OneTab in here? It's great. Do you love it? Yes. Yeah, it is fabulous. So if you're someone who is like researching a whole lot of different bits and pieces and you want to share a whole series of links with others, you know how usually you would go through the process of you'd open it, you'd copy the link and maybe paste it into a doc or something like that and then you keep going through the process, way too much time involved in that. What one tab will actually do for you once you've installed it, sits up next to our Omnibox again, it's this little funnel looking icon and like I was saying before, once you get a whole lot of extensions and you sort of think, I can't remember which one's which, just hover your mouse over the extension and it will tell you what it does. So when I click on one tab, Ha, <laughs> 
<laughs> We're coming right back, folks. Sorry. list with other people so you can just click on it and send that link to other people then they can just click through and, and, and open them as well you don't have to worry about copying and pasting all of those urls so i'll just click on this uh into somewhere else all right i'll screen share no worries sorry forgot about that sorry everybody at home i forgot that i would kick you all off don't take it personally all right. Uh, another one that I love, which is great, it's kind of not quite as uh, powerful as one tab, but might have a really useful purpose for you, is copy all URLs. Does something really similar to one tab, and it literally just copies onto your clipboard every URL in every open tab that you have. And when you paste it, so you can then paste that list straight into a Google Doc, for example. So if you didn't want to send someone or share a one-tab list with people, this is the quickest way of capturing all of the URLs that you have open in all of your tabs, and you just paste it into um, wherever else you would want to share that. Um, another one which is great, and I won't demonstrate it because we'll kick everybody off um, again, <laughs> is a panic button. Now, this is one not to show the students in your classroom, but one for you to keep up your sleeve for um, those Friday afternoons when, you know, really our concentration is waning and it's really hard to focus on whatever's happening in the classroom, so we start looking up where we're going for dinner or what we're going to do on the weekend. And we all know that that's the moment that someone that we would prefer didn't know that's what we were doing in class walks into our room and sees our screen. This is where panic button comes in handy. Because what it actually does is it sits up uh, next to your Omnibox as well. I've got way too many there. It's a little exclamation mark. And when you click on it, it collapses all of your tabs and just leaves you with your home screen, which is probably Google. And you're just like, yeah, I'm totally just searching something that a child just asked me in class a second ago. The, the list go, the your little exclamation mark will go green and it will say a number next to it, which is how many tabs you just condensed. And the second that that administrator leaves the classroom, you click it again and it restores all of your tabs. Okay, so if, if the kids do find out about this or you do notice it on their Chrome browsers, look to see that it's not green with a number. So that means they have just uh, panic buttoned their way out of whatever they weren't supposed to be doing at that point in time. The other thing that I use all the time, and I actually have to say that I quite like, you guys might have noticed that this is a reasonably recent update to Chrome. Underneath our Chrome menu now, we actually see the little icons for all of our extensions. This has only come out you know, a couple of weeks ago, maybe not even. Um, because sometimes we end up with so many extensions that we kind of lose track of our Omnibox. Uh, has anyone got to that point where they've installed so many things and your only box keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller? There's a great extension that I use as well called Simple Extension Manager. And what that does, you'll see it's next to my first thing next to my Omnibox. This actually lists for me all of my extensions and apps. And this is a quite a um, depressingly long list. You can tell that I've spent a lot of time in the Chrome Web Store. This, it keeps going. Yeah. That's not the recommended number of um, <laughs> extensions and apps for anyone. That's for someone who just installs everything because I want to give it a go. And what I can do from this extension manager is I can uh, turn on and off my extensions really easily. So if I want to disable them or enable them, I can just uh, click next to here. It'll turn them on and off. I can delete them from here. I can access the settings from here. Or I can click on them and actually, uh, you know, potentially use them as well. So I find that a really useful thing. So there's quite a few. If you if you are in the Chrome Web Store and you look for extension managers, there's quite a few. I just like that because of it's, it's it is what it is. It's so simple. It's just a simplistic version of it. Uh, okay, a couple of other things in terms of tabs, and then we'll move on to something else. Um, I'll just talk about these. So these are ways of, you know, when sometimes you've got a couple of tabs open and you're like you're on this website here, and then you want to jump back to your presentation and add something from that website, and you come constantly jumping back and forth. There's a really great couple of extensions. So tab scissors and tab glue. And what these do is, uh, so if I was like exactly here and I wanted to be able to jump between the bless you, the um, tabs either side. I would click on my tab scissors icon 
and it'll actually split my screen so it actually moves the um, tab to the left of whatever I had open into a new window separate. So now I can actually be operating in both of these at the same time. And whenever I've finished doing that, so whenever I've got whatever information I needed from those two pages, I actually just click on the tab glue extension and it glues it back together. So it makes it back into uh, the one window rather than multiples. There's another version kind of like that, which is this tab resize. It's a little bit more advanced um, and it makes them all go into new windows, but you can choose if you how many different tabs you want to space out in different places and things like that as well. Um, one more thing with tabs, if you are using tabs a lot, um, Chrome claims that you can have an infinite number of tabs open without slowing down your browsing experience. Anyone who's a big tab browser and he will know that's a lie um, because you do get to the point where you're like, gee, things are going slowly. There's a, this is a great little extension, it's called the Great Suspender. And what it actually does is it actually suspends all of the tabs that you're not currently using so that they don't use any processing power, they're not accessing the internet anymore, so they're not slowing down your connectivity and things like that. And whenever you want to uh, open them again, it, they'll all have the same picture you can see on the screen there, tab suspended, click to reload, and so then it just launches that tab again, um, but it's not using the power in the background, so you don't have to worry about that. All right, everybody okay still? I know I'm talking a lot. Please shout out any questions that you have. We okay, Wendy? Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Some good stuff. Excellent. All right, we'll just talk about something that's, uh, just in case anyone doesn't know it, this is one of the most essential things you should know about Google Chrome, is the ability to manage multiple Google accounts. So I talk about, you know, 2016, one of the major disorders that we are suffering from as a society is multiple Google personalities. Because we're all like, oh, which account did you share that with? Who am I logged in as? Oh, gee, oh, that's my Gmail. No, that's my school one. So we can uh, quite easily jump between our accounts in Chrome by adding these to Chrome. So under our settings menu again, we have the option about halfway down the first page of this people section. Now you can add as many identities to Chrome as you have frequently accessed using Google. So you might want to have your school one and your personal one and it's I'll show how it works, it's really easy then to jump between them and to keep things separate, which I think is probably becoming increasingly important for us. When we sort of started using Google Apps at school, everyone was sort of just using their Gmails and whatever and didn't really care and now we're getting so much stuff that we want to be able to have a bit of separation. So what I do down here is I click on the Add Person button and then I can choose my little avatar for whatever um, account it is and I name my account. And when I click on add, it'll ask me to sign into this account. And once I've signed in, you'll see in the top right-hand corner of my browser, it now says new account because what I've named it. And when I click on that, I can switch people back to my other accounts really quickly and easily. <coughs> now, if you're on a Mac, you also have the option above your tabs, there's a little people um, menu option and you can jump between your accounts here really quickly and easily. Now this is the best way of doing it if you are going to be jumping between accounts rather than actually logging yourself another account here so you know when you're in uh, any, of the, any of the Google products you can add an account but then you constantly have to choose which account you want to access things through. Keep them separate by doing it through Chrome. All right, how are we going to time-wise? 15 minutes. All right, we will jump down to showing a couple of things. So um, some of you guys will have noticed that when I open a new tab, I get these amazing pictures. <coughs> so if I keep going through my new tabs, look at all of this. This is probably one of my favourite extensions. Okay, and this is about how you can personalise your Chrome experience a little bit more. This is called Earth Viewer, Google Earth Viewer, Earth View from Google Maps. And what this actually does is every time you open a new tab, it gives you a different satellite image from Google Earth. 
and they're phenomenal. Like this is nature at its best. And you look at them and you're like, wow, wonder where that is. How does that like how does that shape form? See in the bottom right hand corner, you have a globe. It tells you where it actually is, and you can actually click on that globe <laughs> and it'll open Google Maps for you and show you the exact location. So then you can actually zoom out and you can actually get a bit of a picture of what it's all about. I have genuinely spent hours of my life now. Um, just randomly looking at places all around the world because I guarantee once you once you install this, it's hard not to be curious. So like in terms of adding something to you know create discussion, explore the rest of the world, curiosity in your classroom, this is one of the most fabulous extensions that I have ever come across. Um, I heard from a teacher recently where they're using this, where they're um, like it's a tuning back in activity, and so they're like, okay guys, you know they've been out, you know lunch or whatever like that. Like, okay, so where are we going to visit in the world today? They open a new tab and then they have a little bit of discussion about that location. Um, other teachers have told me they've started to use it as a way of like setting a little bit of um, homework tasks for kids to actually go and research somewhere that's come up in a new tab. It's just, it's phenomenally powerful uh, and, and amazingly beautiful as well. The other one that I've included in here is called the Google Art Project. Now, if you're, in, if you're a cultural sort of, um, you love artworks and sculptures and things like this, um, this actually draws from the Google Cultural Institute and every new tab that you open will give you a different piece of art um, from one of the museums around the world. Similar concept to the Maps one, there's actually a link, it's actually in the bottom left hand corner for this one, that'll take you straight into the Google Cultural Institute, show you more information about that piece of art and the artist and all of those sorts of things as well. Now you can only have one of them active at, the, at one time, so this is where it's great that we all have multiple Google accounts. Because I actually have one in my work account and one in my Gmail account. Um, but you do have to make a little bit of a choice there about which one you're going to access. If you want to just sort of personalise Chrome a little bit more, in the Chrome Web Store, there is actually a whole lot of themes. So if you just feel like your Chrome browser, you're not really a grey fan and there's a lot of grey going on up near our Omnibox, you can actually come into the Chrome Web Store and you can pick a theme. Uh, and it's basically like a, it's a wallpaper but it covers the entire, uh, entirety of Chrome. So a lot of them you can pick like what colour buttons you want, what text you like. So um, you can imagine that a lot of, probably a lot of your kids already have gone down this path of making their Chromes look, yeah, people are nodding, like pimping out their Chrome browsers to something that you look at and think is hideous, but they think is, you know, it's nice for them, it's personalised for them. All right, let's keep jumping down to uh, one thing that I will show you that I think is really important, and there are there's a lot of stuff linked in here um, in the presentation. We'll jump, we won't get necessarily to every single thing in here, but it's all resources for you. Um, is what I call choosing your own download destiny. So you know when you're online and you know you want to download something, and then it just randomly downloads to the same. Um, uh, folder every time and then you end up with like, you know, a hundred things in there, none of them make any sense because they're all named something randomly and that sort of stuff. You can actually, under your settings tab in uh, Chrome, you can choose, so if we go scroll down to the bottom of our settings and click on, there's a tiny little blue button down here that says show advanced settings. And if I click on that and go to downloads, oops, sorry. You'll see here, I can actually click this little button here and get Chrome to ask me where I want to save the file every time I download something. So rather than it all having to necessarily just default going into the one folder, if I know actually I want to download this and this is actually for this particular area or subject or whatever it is, it'll actually do that. So I'm under my Chrome menu again, so my three lines in the top right hand corner, you actually have down the bottom, if I close this, you'll see once I start scrolling down, you also finish at default browser. There's a little blue link below that that says show advanced settings. Gives you a whole lot of more settings and in here is the download section. So you can tick on this and say ask where to save each file before downloading. The other one that I think is great in relation to downloads, because um, 
you know, I, I actually try to avoid downloading much onto my hard drive because I know inevitably my computer is going to die, whereas I know Google Drive, well, we've got big problems if Google crashes, we're all in big trouble, um, it's not going to, uh, is a great uh, extension called Save to Google Drive. And once I install that, if I'm on a website, so I don't know, let's go to... Um, Let's go to my newspaper, one of the newspapers from back home. So if I'm on the website and there's a picture or an article or something like that that I want to save and I want to, or I want to save the page, I can actually right click on it once I've installed my save to Google Drive and I have the option to save, can you guys see that? I'll zoom in a little bit more to save this, uh, either the link straight to Google Drive or the image straight to Google Drive. So it'll save it um, without having to worry about, you know, downloading and then re-uploading it as well. So I use Save to Google Drive a lot. If your school happens to use something other than Google Drive, so if you use um, like Dropbox or Amazon Cloud or any of those other cloud-based storages as well, there's another one called Cloud Save, which will actually enable you to choose which of the cloud-based storage solutions you save it into. All right, let's jump down and have a little bit of a chat about um, using some of this stuff offline. Um, so, internet's perfect all the time, right? Yeah. You guys, I was told yesterday that um, in, in Hawaii you have a very similar problem to us in Australia, that you're in the middle of the ocean and consequently we <coughs> suffer from terrible internet. <laughs> Like, it's terrible in Australia as well. Um, but don't worry, there are some great things that you can still do offline. So um, our team actually put together a fabulous, which is linked in here, it's off slide 32, a fabulous little poster um, of using some of these tools offline, um, which can be really great to um, help you sort of get started. But the most essential things that you guys are probably going to want to be able to access offline are things like your mail and your drive folders, okay? If you haven't used Gmail offline before, it's actually brilliant. It's really, really, really good. So in order to use most of these things offline, you actually need to download from the Chrome Web Store the app associated with that particular um, Google app. So there is a Gmail offline app, and when you install that, all you have to do is when you lose the internet, before, but you have to do it sort of before you lose internet with Gmail, unfortunately. First time I did it, I got on the plane. I was so excited. I was like, oh, I got to do my mail, and I forgot to do it. Yeah. So, sad. <laughs> so what you do is if you know you're going to be without the internet for a while, or if you know that your internet is really spotty wherever you are and you just want to hedge your bets, once you've installed the app, it'll sit underneath your um, app launcher, on your, which is on your bookmarks bar, because it will turn our bookmarks bar on now. And when I click on my Gmail offline, It'll actually launch, kind of looks like, I was going to say old school Microsoft Outlook, but I think that's still what Microsoft Outlook looks like. Um, so it looks like an offline um, web-based uh, sort of though, uh, email client. And you can actually um, access, read um, all of your mail. Um, and I find it's really, really quite effective. It obviously doesn't actually send mail, so you can write it and you can click send. It'll sit in your outbox, and the second you reconnect to the internet, it will sync everything back together. So it'll send anything that you've sent, it will receive new things. And if you are somewhere where you've got a bit of spotty internet, you can leave that app open and it will just sync constantly, so you've always got everything sort of backed up offline. Uh, so you can also do things like docs and sheets and slides and drawings offline. You have to, if you're in your education account, go into your settings for Google Drive and actually enable offline for the first time. Now, if you are on a shared computer, this is not recommended because basically what it's doing is basically saving little local files uh, onto the device. But if you are on your work computer and it's exclusively yours, I would encourage you to go into your uh, Google Drive settings. So in your drive, your settings is your cog wheel here. And actually make sure that you have in here, oh, there's offline, here we go. Checking my offline status, which means I'm probably offline if it's taking that long for it to check my offline status. And you can tick that. Um, okay, 
One final thing that I'll talk about offline, oh, two things quickly. There is, and this might sound a little bit morbid, but when you go offline permanently, um, you need to think about, like, one of the things that we now have is we have so much information about ourselves stored online. If you were no longer able to access your account for whatever reason, what do you want to happen with it? And you can actually go to this um, inactive account manager and you can designate that after, you know, if you don't log into your account for, say, three months or whatever you choose is an appropriate amount of time, that another person has delegate access to all of your Google account, which can be really good if you have, you know, sensitive um, personal stuff that you've saved in there that you want other people to be able to access. Or even in a school situation, if you want people to, if you're not, and you're not using your education account, but you've got a whole folder of stuff you want people to get in, to, they can actually um, then access it. So you can set this off for when you're permanently offline. Uh, one final thing about offline, everybody hates that T-Rex that comes off and says that you can't connect to the internet. But if you haven't already discovered the joy that is the T-Rex, it is a game. Okay, so when you turn off your Wi-Fi and you get the little T-Rex that says unable to connect to the internet, if you hit the space bar or the up arrow on your keyboard, it becomes an incredibly addictive little game. <laughs> Genuinely, I have turned off my Wi-Fi on purpose before. Um, and like, you know, this is what it is. If you just jump over these cacti, it gets really quite hard. It's kind of simple. Guarantee it's harder than you think. And when you get to more advanced levels, you have like eagles that fly and you have to duck underneath them. And it's really, really intense. Um, so I always say this is like Google's little gift to you that like when the internet goes down and you have that moment of, oh, so incredibly frustrating, you just go, no, it's okay, I can just play T-Rex for 15 minutes instead. So um, don't turn your, well, you can turn your Wi-Fi off now if you really want to, but uh, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, but if you turn it off and you just hit your space bar or the up arrow, pretty much guaranteed that you will play this for hours. If you have Chrome on a mobile device as well, it works exactly the same. I have sat on a plane for about an hour playing T-Rex, trying to beat my top score before. Anybody else become obsessed with it? Okay, it's only me, that's really sad. Yes. Online, I love it. Yeah. So I actually get a lot of the multiple accounts yep. on schools that have several schools if you want to book. You don't, if there's space on the hard drive on the computer, you can have multiple yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing is that technically speaking, when you're syncing offline, you are leaving like a footprint of those documents offline so that if someone knows how to access them, they could. So it's about the, um, the privacy of the data that you would be syncing offline and whether that's a big deal or not. If you're teaching like first graders, probably doesn't really matter as much as, you know, your personal stuff as a teacher or um, even more senior kids. So just keeping that in mind in, in relation to making that decision is something probably worth thinking about. All right. Um, one final thing I'll just, uh, just talk about and then we'll take a couple other questions we're about to finish up. If you are interested in sort of geeking out a little bit more in terms of Chrome stuff, go to Chrome colon forward slash forward slash flags. Now these are um, basically experimental features within Chrome. The Chrome, Chrome actually says in here that they take no responsibility, Google said, they have no responsibility for what might happen when you install them because they're all sort of in that real beta stage of, hey, we might implement this in the future, we'll just test out how it works. It actually says in the warning that your um, browser might spontaneously combust as a result of some of these flags. I'm not sure that's ever happened, but um, they are obviously doing that. And if you want to sort of geek out and test out some of the things that might be coming, so for example, as I mentioned before, under our Chrome menu now I can see all of my extensions. This was actually something you could have turned on months ago as a Chrome flag. So under the Chrome flags, they sort of bring out all the features that are coming and you can test out. If you're sort of like a, I'm just getting started intermediate person with Chrome, don't go to flags, okay? And you don't want your, your Chrome browser spontaneously combusting. All right, final thing that I've linked in here for you is actually uh, a link to another presentation on Chrome, um, which is my, uh, basically my list of 
uh, all of my favourite Chrome apps and extensions that I have sort of gathered over the last few years. How many favourites do you have? Yeah, I don't know. It's like having favourite children. You're not allowed to have <laughs> favourites. But um, I think in here at last count there's probably like 80 or 90 in here. But these are, I actually update this frequently. So what happened with me was that, as you could tell when I showed you my embarrassingly long list of apps and extensions, that I was realising that I was coming across all these really cool things and I wanted to make sure that even if I wasn't using them that I remembered about them. So I started this more or less as a resource for myself and every single app and extension that's in here, same sort of deal as what we were looking at then, they're all linked off the presentation. Um, and I update this probably at least once a week with the new things that, that I see and, um, and I delete things that have go out of um, the Chrome Web Store and things like that. So if you're sort of thinking, that's great, what else should I play with? Um, check that out. That's another you know week of your life gone, just jumping in and out of the Chrome Web Store. So sorry about that. All right, and it is lunchtime now, and uh, we are pretty much spot on. And I know that the most important thing is to never ever keep um, teachers from food. <laughs> so um, please feel free to ask any questions or hang around. I'm not going here. We're going to answer some questions on air. Um, and lunch is back where we had breakfast, so back downstairs into that main um, atrium area. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. No worries. Thank you online um, for hanging out. We actually nicknamed you Chrome early. Do you guys have any online we're sharing? Actually, some really awesome uh, use cases of how they're using a lot of the ones that we use. Awesome. Uh, any questions, guys, before we head off for lunch? Uh, for on air, we'll be back um, at our next one, which will be um, at 1.30 p.m. Hawaii, um, 4.30 p.m. Pacific. Um, so stick around, and if you make sure you post your uh, Twitter handle so we can give away cardboard to someone during the session. Um, but so you can scroll for these getting out of the way. You can just throw in any questions you have. Um, Otherwise, we would love you to take the time. What do you want to be able to do? Um, so if you, everything, everything's linked up here. So if you wanted to, um, if you, so they're all, so when you have Chrome, this is new shares. So as soon as so you just type in here, so if you wanted to search, um, thing. Thanks for joining.